Have you been struggling with the game feeling choppy and you not performing how you used to? Well, in this guide, I will cover the best Overwatch settings for PC in an updated 2020 version for November 2020. These settings will definitely boost your FPS and reduce your input lag. My name is Neon Air, and welcome to Neon Air Gaming. I'll basically go through all the settings related to performance and tell you which ones are the best to use, etc. Without any further ado, let's dive right into it. All right, so you're right here and you wanna go to options and video. Now, obviously the first thing you're gonna wanna do is that you're gonna wanna have your display mode on full screen. Now the problem with windowed and borderless windowed is that they won't give you the same input lag and they won't give you the same frames as you can get on full screen. I also don't recommend tabbing out. Tabbing out can be really weird and can cause some bugs in the settings. Next, you wanna use the best monitor, usually the one with the most Hertz. So my monitor, my main monitor has 240 Hertz. So I want to use this monitor and then we can jump right to the resolution because this actually links in perfectly. You're going to want to have this to first 1920 by 1080 if you have uh, a 1080p monitor, but if you have a 1400p monitor, then uh, you can use the other settings. But yeah, so usually you're going to have 1920 by 1080 and then however much your Hertz monitor is. So my monitor has 240 Hertz, so I just like 240. Field of view, crank that to the max. Um, you know, if you have your field of view lower, you're gonna see less than you have you have your field of view higher. So I'll put it on screen right now, a comparison of having the lowest field of view to having the highest field of view. Next, aspect ratio, pretty much 16 by nine is fine. V-Sync off, V-Sync is terrible. It's your worst enemy, it's your arch nemesis. You wanna know, you're gonna need to turn that off. Uh, triple buffering off. Reduced buffering is good. Um, this will like uh, this uh, triple buffering will cause input lag, whereas this will reduce it. And uh, yeah, it's really good. Um, display performance stats if you want to have them in game. On I have them on because I like to see how much FPS I'm getting in the game. Um, display system clock. This is if you want to see this timer up here in the top right corner. Limit FPS custom. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna want to select. A lot of people say you know put it unlimited, but the best thing is actually select the Hertz plus five. So for me, I put 240 and then add an extra five to it. And that, uh, okay, I'm uncapable. <laughs> um, this is because this will get you the least input lag and I recommend that. For graphics quality, uh, just says ultra here, but ignore this. So I have render scale 100%, texture quality high, texture filtering quality low 1X, local fog detail low, dynamic reflections off, shadow detail ultra, Model detail medium, effects detail low, lightning quality low, anti-alias quality off, refraction quality low, and screenshot quality one times resolution and off, off, local refraction and ambient occlusion. Now the reason this is, is because first of all, more frames if you have everything on low, off, or medium, but some of them, this is on ultra, shadow is important because you want to see where your enemies are, right? And shadows can often give you that advantage in the gameplay and model detail medium because you know you want to have proper um chances of hitting headshots and if you see the model detail better that's fine as well uh texture quality high because the game will look trash if you don't have that on high so just keep that on high but the rest is low and off and one time resolution because that will give you the most frames and the least input lag now at the bottom here we have gamma correction contrast and brightness now so this is interesting because i actually like this because if you see, I have this spicy look on the game because I have my contrast high up, so the colors are like very saturated. And uh, I like it, you don't have to. Color blend options, this is if you're sweat. <laughs> um, I just have enemies red to default, and I have the friendlies, my teammates, lime green. So yeah, if you want to have that, you can have that, it's pretty cool. Um, next, I just want to talk about sound real quick. Now, sound. Overwatch is a game that requires a lot of attention to sound. It's a big noise muffled mess, but honestly, if you can sort out all the different sounds in the game and understand all of them, you're going to have a huge advantage because you're going to know when that Zarya is using Grav or when that Sombra is using EMP and you're going to be ready for it. So basically, um, have your volume high. I know mine's quite low. That's because my headphones are extremely loud. And um, Another thing I recommend you definitely want to have subtitles on for critical gameplay What this will do is someone if someone uses alt that's considered critical gameplay You're gonna get subtitles on screen for example, like you're gonna see like uh, Sombra and then her ultimate voice line and so you know Sombra is using EMP. This is a huge advantage in game definitely use that um, 
And for what I recommend for a voice chat, a lot of people have push to talk, but what I find the best is if you have open mic and then simply um, go to controls. And if you go to chat and voice, and if you go to voice chat, toggle mic mute, so you can mute your mic if you press G. You don't have to hold it, just press G. And when you wanna talk, unmute, just press G and unmute again, so it's way simpler. And yeah, that's pretty much what I recommend. As for gameplay, you definitely wanna have always skip kill cam off. This is because you always wanna look at your kill cams to see what you can do better, and you can see how the enemy killed you, so you're gonna know how to improve basically for yourself. And if you have always skip kill cam on, then you're never gonna get to see that, so definitely have that on. Then for controls, sensitivity is a big one, but what I want to say and what I recommend um, to get the best settings for your heroes, you can go in individually for each hero. For example, I play Lucio, right? And I didn't know this up until a while ago, but Lucio actually has like his custom own settings, which is allow backwards roll right. This is super useful for Lucio, and this is actually off by default when you get the game. So just go into your own hero and just check if there's any settings that there are specifically for your hero that you want to change. For example, usually what I did is uh, when I'm playing Widowmaker, I go in here and I put relative aim sensitivity while zoomed up because it's way too low for me when I first start the game. So yeah, you can customize each hero sensitivity by itself and all that. So yeah, definitely, definitely try that. Last but not least, definitely in social, put your career profile visible with the public. <laughs> this has nothing to do with FPS or input lag, but for the love of God, please let your teammates see your career profile so that they can see what heroes you're playing, what you main, and then they can better flex pick depending on what you're playing. Anyways, I hope you like these settings and I hope that they did give you some less input lag and they provided you with a lot more FPS. But if you enjoyed the video, please watch some of my other videos and give this video a like and subscribe to my channel because I have much more videos just like this that are always focused on helping you improve at Overwatch. Anyways, without any further ado, I hope you enjoyed. My name is Neonair and welcome to Neonair Gaming. Peace.